Good morning. My name is Joe Cashwell with Rotorcraft RC, a division of Rotary Wing RC. We're your RC go-to people for charge cases, RC helicopters, multi-rotors, and a couple other items coming soon. We got a quick little video today. It's a how-to for soldering. A um, couple things that people come into our shop for week after week after week is to ask uh, Kyle or I to put bullets on their motors and their ESCs and put on the castle connectors and the EC5s and EC3s and, and you still get Dean's questions also. But soldering techniques have changed a little bit over time because of the higher current draws that we have now. Um, the bullet connectors have gone from 3 millimeter to 4 millimeter to 5.5 and now we got 6 and 6.5 millimeter connector so you have to have the right equipment and a little bit more skill and technique to do the bigger products so what we're going to do right now is we're going to solder up a small connector and then we'll solder up a bigger connector and show you the difference in the heat and the product and the equipment that we have to use what we have here is just a scrap piece of wood um, I'm a cabinet builder by trade, so we always have wood laying around. I just put little rubber door bumpers on the bottom of it to keep it from sliding around. And we pretty much mic out our connectors that we're going to use, and we figure out what drill bit drills a better hole. Then we kind of leave us a little blank space for different things. Um, what we're going to do is we're going to show you a trick that we have for making 90-degree connectors. Um, this gets used a lot in charging cases um, for the internal connections and what we try to do is limit space to where you're coming out of the front of the charger you're putting in the, the uh, connector and you don't want the wires going out in front of a logo or something like that so to make it sleek and, and uh, snug up against the front of the charger we put a 90. Well, this was something that was a little challenging to do, but all we do is we just buy the four millimeter connector and we just notch out where the solder hole is at. And then what that does is that gives us the ability to where when we strip our wire, we can push our wire down in there. Now, if you don't get a good connection in there, um, we actually sometimes take the Dremel and push the Dremel down in there. But now you can solder these up. You can tin both of them. You can get this one nice and skinny. You can push it down in there and make it one. Um, you'll have to figure out the trick for getting the heat shrink on there. That is a gimmick. Um, it's kind of tough, but after you do it a couple times, it works out really neat. Uh, just going back to the regular connector, if you're trying to deal with a wire that's too big to go in the hole that kind of tells you that you need to step up to the next size connector. Uh, remember that each connector can only flow so much power. So if you're trying to put an enormous wire into a small connector, I can tell you it's going to create resistance and when you create resistance you create heat and then there's a couple things about the wave or frequency and stuff like that that's going through that you're going to disturb uh, that. So if you find out that you're trying to put a giant wire in a connector and it doesn't fit, this is what you're looking for for a fit. So what we're going to do is we're just going to take our soldering iron. We always clean the tip before we do any connections, any soldering, anything. Always keep your tip clean. Every time you touch it, grab it, clean it. So all we're going to do is tin the cup And I just try to get a little bit of solder to touch in between the two. And then your heat's going to transfer. I'm in the, the mid 700 degree Fahrenheit, 430-ish Celsius. Um, then all I do is I just, these are one of my spring-loaded pliers. It just gives me something to where when I push against a wire, I'm not chasing it across the table. Once again, clean your tip, get some solder touching in between both of them. And as soon as you get it touching in between both, it'll transfer the heat much faster from your tip to your wire. And then all we're trying to do is just get the temperature on that big old wire. 
Remember, that wire is like a heat sink. It's drawing this heat out. Then I always flip the wire over and get the other side. But now we've soldered the back side of it. We have all the strands coated. My technique is a little bit different than everybody else. I put the tip on the cup and then I wedge the wire in there and I get them both liquid again. To where a lot of people use the puddle to melt the solder on the wire. And then I come right back around, I keep that on there. It's in. And once it solidifies, you see that nice shiny look that everybody's looking for. Now, I have been known to put a sponge up in heat sink. You know, get it up here, get the wire up. But you have, that cup is nice and full. It's nice and shiny. That's a good connection right there. On Kyle's big machine, that he's got the big Contronic competition motor and a 200 Cosmic in it. That thing can draw some power out of a pack really really fast. Drawing all that power through there you get a lot of heat. So then you start going to the bigger connectors you get more solder in here you can go to bigger wires um, and then because you have a bigger connector in diameter you have more connection less resistance. So that's how we solder. Um, you can clean it up with a little bit of denatured alcohol before you heat shrink it if you take your heat shrink, if you're not putting it inside of a connector, you put your heat shrink on and you find that it's too tight. I have a little tool that I made. It's actually a, a split ring pliers. I took the nips off the end of it and I can actually just finesse it just enough to where to go right over an oversized connector, but you're still dealing with a, a nice tight I have a solder rework station over here, so my heat gun does not sound like a normal heat gun. Um, it's actually very quiet. And we will be selling these solder rework stations on Rotorcraft RC and on RotaryWingRC.com. Rotary and they're going to be about $109 plus shipping. And it's an all-in-one unit. And if I can get Kyle to sweep the camera over. Now this is our Rotocraft RC rework station. It has the heat gun built into it. If you can hear it just a little bit, the pump is inside of this so you don't have the noise out here. And then you can pick your temperature, your airflow on the rework station. This is in Celsius, so you have to learn a little bit. It's not in Fahrenheit but you can move your temperature up and down for your rework station. If you're degooping stuff, you can turn the temperature up, put a little more air to it. Um, 430C to 432C is where I solder the big connectors. I'll bump it down to right around 400C, which is 432C is in the 700F Fahrenheit, and then I can drop below 700 Fahrenheit to do the smaller connectors. It also comes with the solder with several tips, the holder, the sponge. Um, we buy these separate. This cleans, cleans the gook. We also get these. I put the rubber feet on the bottom once again so they don't slide. Um, these are good for cleaning the tips. So you can basically, after your tip is sat overnight, you can get all the corrosion or whatever you want to call it on there. Then you sponge it off. Um, the only thing I'm not tickled about these is it's not silicone wire. It's 24 gauge, but it's not silicone wire. So don't touch your soldering tip to it because it'll make a mess. Um, once again, it's a quiet little machine. It's about as affordable as you can get because it has a great soldering system in it, plus the, the heat gun built into it. and the heat gun will keep going until it cools off so you don't burn out the ceramic element. 
I hope you enjoyed this video on how to solder. It's just the way we do it. I know everybody else has a different technique. Um, everybody has different equipment. Some people use torches, some people use soldering guns. We like the soldering irons, you have a little bit more connection. You have multiple different tips with a soldering iron, so if you're trying to do it with a little bitty tip, you're probably not gonna get anywhere fast. So if you have the ability to get one of the larger tips, it's gonna help you out doing the bigger connectors. Please subscribe to us on YouTube, Rotary Wing RC. We also have two websites, rotorcraftrc.com, rotarywingrc.com. Both of those are the websites that you can purchase from. You can always give Kyle Cashwell a call at 407-222-6698. Harass him, ask questions, purchase stuff from him. No matter what you're looking for, he's going to walk you through it. If you have technical questions for us, whether you buy product from us or not, we're here to help you. This hobby will not grow if we let it go static. Follow us on Facebook, Rotary Wing RC and Rotorcraft RC. If you have any questions, you can private message us on Facebook also. You can also text Kyle because his phone number that I gave you is his cell phone. So if you don't feel like calling him, you're at work, or you're trying to hide behind your boss, text Kyle. You know, the texting. Thanks a lot, and y'all have a great day.